Hey guys, happy late May 2023. It's Evan and today I want to just talk about a little bit um, about how you avoid food bites um, in a bigger picture other than just tap and hook training and then also just talked about some of my favorite snake hooks. So anyways, this is a quick picture of the shot of the snake room as it is and right now is not the safest time to be sticking hands in cages because these snakes are all pretty hungry and there's snake scent in this room right now. So I just thought that would be a pretty good way of showing you some boas because I know you guys like it. Here's a Guyana boa, uh, almost three years old, nice ladder tail. But um, today's actually a good day to talk about avoiding food bites with your boas because um, this would be a likely day to get bitten because there's food scent in the room, they're hungry because it's been a long time since they've been fed, and also this time of year just to get a little raunchy for food. So let me see if I can show you what I mean by this. This is actually a python, but let me show you what I mean by how raunchy these guys can be right now. So, you know, these guys, oops, woo, I always am jumping. It happens every time and I can't stop. But so if you imagine you're sticking your hand in there, you would be getting bit, okay? And that's just a real bummer when you're trying to service cages and things. And um, the common wisdom, I need to wash all my glass here, but the common wisdom is that you tap or hook train your animal. And I'm not going to go cover too much about that. That's well covered and it'd just be iterative. But tap and hook training is really a good way to um, avoid your bites. Here's an Argentine. Um, but bigger picture than that, I want to talk about creating different milieus uh, between feeding days, feeding events, and your other events. And by that, I mean um, Pavlovian conditioning means that these animals start to associate certain things with um, certain or certain stimulus with certain other events. So, for example, if you just every time you reached in, you fed your animal. Um, it would start to believe that every time you open the cage, you're going to be feeding it. So one really important thing, I believe, to avoid that kind of Pavlovian condition feed response is simply to create very different energies in your room between a feeding day and a not feeding day. So like if I'm in here and I'm going to be doing maintenance, usually it's a much more casual feel to the day, meaning I'll come in here, I'll flick on the lights, I usually put on a podcast, I don't start opening cages right away. I'll put, you know, I might wait five, 10 minutes as I pull some other stuff out. Um, and I just have a very different energy to my day uh, than when I'm doing a feeding event. And on top of that, I'm also going to be tap and hook training all my snakes, which is just a way that in the moment you touch them with something to turn off their feed responses. And so that in combination with the differences in my demeanor creates a very different energy attitude for that day than when I'm going to come in and feed the snake. So like later tonight when I'm going to come in here and feed the snakes, I'm going to march in here, flick on just a small light in the corner that will allow me to see things, and then I just come in and I immediately start opening cages. Open cage, boom, feed. Open cage, boom, feed. Open cage, boom, feed. That allows me to, um, that allows me to create a very different energy to the room and they will get Pavlovian conditioned differently. Here's another Amorali Boa Bolivian short tail. So that's just something I would encourage you to think about is Pavlovian conditioning, whether or not you are actively doing something, the way you behave in a room is training your animals or conditioning your animals. And so in conjunction with just creating a very different demeanor to your way you act in your room between maintenance days and non and feeding days, you will help that your tap training, your hook training will help. And so that's just very important for avoid, avoiding food bites because I think that a food bite from a large boa is something you just, you could go your whole life and be happy to avoid. So to that end, the last thing I want to talk about is just show you the four snake hooks that I have and what my preferences are on them. Um, and the first thing I'll tell you is this hook sucks. Don't get one like that. That's more of like a field hook. Um, it's over three feet long and it's got this large open hook, but a relatively wide, uh, thin diameter hook. So it's just not appropriate inside a room, inside a cage is too long. And I think that if you're gonna put any, lift up something that you would with something that size, it's a little too thin bodied. So these are really the three that I use. This one I'll use sometimes more with like my Amazon tree bow and things, but that's kind of useful if you wanted to go and buy something like that. That would not be a bad size when it's like 18 inches long, but these are actually my two favorite. This one is just a standard hook, but it's got a nice thick 
diameter uh, hook. And it's only, it's a little less than two feet long. I think it's about 20 inches long, uh, the handle is. So that's a good one for larger snakes. And then this is actually my favorite snake. If you force me to only keep one, this one is about 18 inches long. I made it myself out of a piece of 3 8 inch aluminum dowel uh, that I bent and sanded smooth. And then I glued it into a, uh, uh, a golf club shaft. So that's about 18 inches long. And what these are used for is primarily two things. They're used for tap and hook training. So, you know, touching the snake. And also I'll use these. This one's perfect for like reaching back and sliding a hide forward so you don't have to slide it forward with your hands where you're likely to get bit in a rack. And then this one is used with the bigger animals. Importantly, they are not for picking up boas, especially large boas. I just think that Large bows don't like to be picked up by these. They don't uh, think of they're, they're heavy enough body that probably hurts them or is at least uncomfortable. And it just makes your handling sessions go uh, poorly. So what I do use these for, other than just snagging things and hook training, is when I enter a cage, let me see if I can use an example. If I was gonna enter this cage, I'm not going to because this one's fired up. I would put this one here, like say I was gonna grab that little uh, Kleenex box I put this right here so that as I reached in, it would have another thing to block, uh, block its strike so I could avoid that food bite and it would just help me. So that's just kind of how I use my snake hooks and I just want to talk about a bigger picture philosophy to keeping safe in your room. Take care. Hope that was interesting.